You're siphoning ad revenue? I know, but at least I have the audacity to be like, you should be watching George C. Scott's Patton right now. Why make anything? Well, because it's, it's the thrill of the making. Sometimes, like, I'll be honest with you, the breakfast that I make at home, I'll take it, is, worth, uh, is worse, I should say, than the breakfast that I could get at a diner. I don't have a revolutionary method of cooking bacon or making toast. The scrambled eggs from somebody who's been a line cook for 20 years are going to clear my scrambled eggs. And they got the economies of scale from dealing with the hash browns. My ass is not going to get in there, you know, with like an industrial grater and make sure that they're grated all nice. I'm not squeezing the, uh, the, the hash browns through the cheesecloth as well as they could. They're experts. They know what they're doing. But sometimes you wake up in the morning and you go, you know what? I'd like to make a big breakfast. You get a certain pleasure out of, out of going through the motions yourself instead of merely being like, you know, trying to pursue optimism in, or optimization, I should say, in, in every single domain of your life. I gotta be honest with you, it's been a pleasure living in the age of reason, but I do also think that society, it needs an, an extra dose of vibes. Get away from me, please, sir. I feel like we have a, just a little bit of a pinch too much reason and a pinch too little of vibes. We need more people that um, refuse to get into debates. <laughs> and whenever someone says, hey, what are your reasons for that? You can just say, I don't know. It just, I felt like it. Now, for some stuff, by the way, grung, grung, Thanks the Grug thanks the Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. <clears throat> Much appreciated. Um, for some things, you know, important policy decisions and whatnot, I think it makes sense. You know, those have to pass through the, um, the marketplace of ideas. But for some things, like why do you buy your kimchi at the store instead of, purchase, uh, instead of purchasing the ingredients separately and making it at home? I don't know. You got to pick your battles in this life. The kimchi you get from the store is, is really good. I know your ass has read the mangchi recipe. My ass lived in Daegu for a year. I'll stack up nuts on the table. I'll stack up my Korean palate versus the average Korean palate in chat. I'm not saying I'm taking on your champion. You've probably got like an expert in there, but the, the median Korean food opinion, absolutely. You want to get into a debate about authenticity? No shot, bro. You don't have the smoke. I'm from Daegu? Oh, son of a bitch. How do you like them apples? See, the joke is that Daegu is famous for its apples. <laughs> And, um, be, and getting really hot in the summertime. And um, being in a, in a valley. And uh, it did some of the group stage matches during the 2002 World Cup. Stop. Stop this. I should never have taken this item. Gun to the back of your head, name five Korean dishes. I'm not going to... The fact that you asked for five just shows me that you don't know what you're talking about. That's like saying, I bet you can't name two Beatles albums. Like, what are we doing here? Kate, just... Can you just say, be quiet in chat? Come on. They think I can't name five Korean dishes. You know what I mean? We eat legitimately Korean food. Like... I'm going to say three days a week. I wanted to say some weeks it might be four. I'm not going to do it because it's. I'm, I'm not up here to fucking negotiate with terrorists, bro. I will never forget. Never forget what? It's an insulting question. It's like, can you name five letters of the alphabet? Of course I can name five letters of the alphabet. Now my ass is like, I got to make sure that they're really obscure letters. I got to be like Q, Z, X, V, J. 
He did say he likes Korean food more than Mexican food. That is true. But I like my wife more than I like Mexican food, so we eat a lot of Korean food. You can't be mad at a, at a man just for being honest. Just get this motherfucker out of here. <laughs> not, not the person in chat. I was just getting some humor out of it. I'm talking about Blood Puppy, bro. This dude's pissing me off. I'll take it. What do you like about Mexican food? It tastes good is the number one thing, controversially speaking. Cheese is good. True? I'm going to do it. I like the tortilla. I like the meats. I like the rice. The foods, uh, a lot of the foods are fun. Love cilantro, absolutely. Hate being asked about it because I pronounce it differently than the rest of you, and as a result, it gets uh, it derails chat for 22 minutes. Call me Rick Mercer. The hell? We take these. We're ballin'? We're kind of ballin'? Bro's turning 40 talking about fun foods. Just eat your slop, Grandpa. Oh, man. Get, stop attacking me! That's a really good comment. I'm gonna give you a plus two on that one. Never did I feel more 40 than when I made baked oatmeal for myself. And then when I tasted it and it didn't taste that good, I was like, what did I expect? It's baked oats. <laughs> like I just, when I, when I ate it, I was like hoping it would taste maybe, I don't know, like a, a, an apple cinnamon Nutri-Grain bar or something like that. Then I ate it and it did not really taste, it was okay, but it was, it was a little gruel-esque, yeah. Um, and then I thought back about like, the process of cooking it and the ingredients that I put into it. And I was like, no, nah, this makes sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense that this doesn't really taste that good. I mean, it was fine, but it just, you know, it, did, it didn't excite the spirit the way a cheddar jalapeno bagel from Costco does. I'm rolling, I don't care. You would be stupid to not sack a life in this situation. Get, get me out of here, bro. Just, just chill. Why is he still attacking me? Because you're attacking him? Because he's attacking me, bro. We were always at war with Eurasia. There we go. What's the capital of Burkina Faso? Ouagadougou. That will be the only capital question that I'll ask today. You know what? No one ever says, what's the capital of the United States? As soon as you get one capital right, everybody starts popping out of the woodwork. Oh, yeah? What's the capital of Uzbekistan? And I'm like, okay, bro, it's Tashkent, but can you give me like a, a freebie? Why do you know these? I learned them when I was younger and they just never go away. Nuts on the table, capital of Canada. 
Um, 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 Burlington. Ah, my nuts! Shunk! Tung, 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 tung. They go down the stairs. Tung, 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 tung. I was going to say Etobicoke, but then I thought maybe I've been saying Etobicoke too much. Joke's on you. Free vasectomy. You already live in Canada. You could get a free vasectomy anyway. Yeah, if I wanted to wait eight months. <laughs> if I want that shit done, you know, Amazon Prime style, we got to take matters into our own hands. You really have to wait eight months? Could be worse, man. Women have to wait nine months. <laughs> That's the least I could do. I don't know. I haven't made my appointment yet. Nothing, huh? Range upgrade. I'll try. HP up, luck down. See where the bad guys are to be found and make them lay down. Did you see the clip of Wemby dunking and it looks just like the final dunk from Space Jam? My parents, age 26, let's buy this house and have our third child. Me, age 26, hey, did you see that dunk from Wemby where it looks just like the final dunk from Space Jam? Please stop making the same joke. But you, you just, you make it so easy with your authentic sharing of stuff that our parents probably weren't that interested in when they were our age, I don't know. Being pregnant doesn't sound worth it. You can't eat sushi for... Listen, they said it, not me, okay? I, this is why you can't just read stuff from the chat. It's true. You can't eat sushi for uh, nine months. Well, technically, you shouldn't eat sushi from the time that you find out you're pregnant, which happens, you know, on average, probably like six weeks into the pregnancy. So you can get like six weeks of sushi. The only thing is... In the true, true ironic twist of fate, you don't know that it's your last six weeks eating the sushi until it is, until it's already over. There's a lot of, I mean, there's the obvious sacrifices you have to make when you're pregnant. You know, you're growing a large object inside of your body. It carries discomfort and other side effects. Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. But then on top of that, like, your sense of smell goes fucking crazy. Like, you basically become a, a police drug-sniffing dog. This is not a joke. Some of you have not been around for, for a long time. Um, like, on Earth, you've probably been around, but you might, not, you might have been watching, like, Nick Merckx three years ago or something. You might be watching him today, I don't know. Is he on, is he, did he go to Kick or did he go to YouTube? I definitely want this. Not rumbled. Come on. There's no shot. There's a big streamer. <laughs> it's rumble? Really? He got the rumble deal? No. Even Kai Sanat's on rumble? Yeah, but is he on rumble? Or is it like... You know, he does, like, one stream a week on Rumble, and then the rest of his streams are on Twitch. Like, is he going part-time? Part, part -time. That's what I thought. And you know what? Irrespective of my disagreements with, with some of these streamers, good for them. Get the bag, bleed the venture capitalist dry, and stay on the platform that actually gives you some eyeballs. <laughs> I can understand it, of course. What were we talking about a second? Oh, yeah, the, the difficulties of pregnancy. This is not a joke. My wife's sense of smell got so strong um, during her first trimester. She got aggravated at me because I opened the fridge too much. You know the fridge where everything's cold and doesn't smell? 
she would be like, can you please only open the fridge when you already know what you want? <laughs> and then... <laughs> I'm, I'm in there like, hmm, I wonder what we got in here. We got some cheese, we got some leftovers, we got... Now I could just eat some peanut butter straight out of the damn jar. You can't eat, or you're not supposed to eat sushi. You're not supposed to consume over a very, very, very small dose of caffeine. You're not supposed to eat uh, deli meats. Finally, a good item. Yeah, you can keep peanut butter in the fridge. Natural peanut butter. I don't eat the natural PB anymore because it doesn't taste as good as the fake stuff, but I've been known to dabble. I just, just don't really care about Mama Mega, but... You can have like 300 milligrams of caffeine. Listen, Chad, talk to your doctor before you like cement that in your brain. Um... How many Panera Charge Lemonades is that? Zero point four. <laughs> okay. It's all it's not so bad. Two sips of a lamb's tail. There's a I mean, you 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 sacrifice a lot. Obviously you can't drink alcohol either. And then if you breastfeed, you can't uh, drink, like your, your dietary restrictions that you had when you were pregnant, I think they actually get like almost even more restrictive during breastfeeding. Because it turns out like all that stuff sort of filters down to the, through the milk, I guess. Which is crazy, because it's like, they're, they're feeding the, the Kobe beef cows wine. Here's a question. Can a pregnant woman eat Kobe beef? Or do they need to get some Kobe beef from cows that are drinking non-alcoholic White Claws? There's a joke in here somewhere that would actually slap. I can't find it, though. You ever think... Listen, I uh, eat a lot of plant-based food. But we're now reaching the point with food marketing... Um, where I actually look at the phrase plant-based on a piece of food packaging as a red flag. It's the same way that like, um, a, a, like a bag of table sugar that you buy at the grocery store will say like fat-free. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, Carolus Linnaeus. It's all sugar. Or that like peanut butter will be like sugar-free. And I'm like, no shit, Carolus Linnaeus is all fat. It's like we bought, um... Kimbap at the Korean grocery store, it's vegetable kimbap. Like it's burdock, there's no egg, it's julienne carrots, there's no beef, it's rice, it's nori, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sorry, it's kim. It just says plant based on the front of it. And I'm like, it's not plant based, motherfucker, it's plants. Plant based is like a hamburger that's made of beans or something like that or it's or beets or like soy protein that's been dyed to look like beef it's it's plants bro it's like the oh we have a plant-based garden salad i'm like i know i'm familiar with the concept of of crops like how about gluten-free on items that have never had gluten in them I get in trouble with the gluten-free stuff. I think I'm too Reddit-coded for the gluten-free stuff. I think... You know the graph of... Um, Left-handedness over the years? Where, like, it was at 2% and then it rose to 10% in a generation. And then it um, stayed at 10% forever because they finally stopped hitting people that use their left hand in school. Maybe that's what gluten intolerance is. 
Because I grew up, like, I think what, what the boomer inside of my brain wants to say is, when I was a kid, nobody was gluten intolerant. But maybe, like, 8% of people were gluten intolerant. They just had a lot of diarrhea and tummy aches. And now that there's, like, more gluten-free options, you know, you, you see them represented more because they actually have the ability to exercise their dietary preferences. <laughs> Instead, like, definitely when I was 22 and I knew everything about the world, I was like, this gluten stuff is just, like, it's basically made up, unless you have diagnosed celiac disease. Now, as, a, as an older man, I'm like, you know what? Of course you're, you're going to see more of it as it becomes more, like, accessible, you know? Because I, your hunch is, like, uh, or my hunch as a child, or a younger man at least, was like, they're doing it for, like, attention. As an adult, I'm like, maybe they maybe I should just like trust them a little bit more. They got bigger problems. Like, you don't have diarrhea. You can eat bread, you liar. Like, what do they stand to gain from that? What does this shit do again? Clout. I'm so clouded. I'm so clouded, I can't even eat bread. Random pills. No thanks. No thanks. And, yeah, I, I should support it the other in the other sense, too, because my ass loves gluten. Glutinous foods are, are some of my favorite foods. So uh, I support you eating gluten-free foods because it's more gluten for me. Not in a, a malevolent, thanks for being vegan so I have more steaks to eat sort of ignorant way, but in like a genuine sense that like if you're gluten intolerant and they bring out four bread rolls and there's four people at the table, everyone's getting one that can have one and my ass is taking two. And you know why I'm taking two? Because someone has to. Because if nobody takes the fourth one in the interest of politeness, they're not going to give us more bread. That's what they rely on. They rely on someone being too impolite, or sorry, too polite to take a second piece of bread when many people at the table probably want a second piece of bread but just don't want to be the person that incites the revolution to begin with. The sheep are too scared to eat the last slice of pizza. They'd rather let it rot in the fridge, not me. Not me. Everybody else at the table, engrossed in conversation, me at the table? Yeah, after all, why shouldn't I have it? I will say, though, as somebody who loves bread, I feel like bread's getting a bad rap, man. I know that it is not good for you. I feel like bread consumption, though, when I was a kid, you go out to a restaurant with your parents, you're obliterating, like, two baskets of bread. Nowadays, whenever I go out for dinner with, well, it's mostly my wife, but even when we were on like the Disney cruise and we got paired up with that other family, I feel like they were not going crazy over the, the bread. I was eating one roll, and then sometimes my wife wouldn't finish her roll, so I would eat her roll. Sometimes my daughter wouldn't finish her roll, so I would eat her roll. People are like, you're going to spoil your dinner? Bro, this is, is bread. It is my dinner. And also, no, I won't. I'm going to eat all that too. If anything, I'll skip dessert. I'd rather eat an extra bread roll than like a, a scoop of chocolate ice cream or something like that. We're bringing bread back, people. We're bringing bread back. We used to be a proper country. 
I'm, we're carb maxing. I do remember. I saw someone say, I'm Gen X. We all got lied to about the importance of carbs in our diet. That's true to some extent. I definitely remember in the second grade, we learned about the Canadian food pyramid circa 1996. And they definitely did say you should have like eight to 10 servings of grains a day, which in hindsight is fucking insane. <laughs> but now we've gone too far in the opposite. We're the only... Foods that are deliberately made in a laboratory to be healthy are low carb. Now, I understand it's the market that dictates that to some extent because every motherfucker on earth is on keto because it seems like it requires no work but actually requires a staggering amount of discipline. Turns out your body, like, loves eating carbohydrates. It's hard to resist the siren song of, a, of an apple if you haven't had sugar for, like, two weeks. I love basic carbohydrates, man. They get a, I'm not I'm not saying you should eat, you know, refined table sugar. But I don't fuck with cauliflower rice, bro. Give me the real deal. I'll take some cauliflower on the side, but I am not eating Butternut squash noodle pasta. Give me the semolina flour, put some squash in the sauce. That being said, I do care about spots on my apples. So maybe you keep the birds and the bees for yourself. Hey NL, on a scale from 1 to 10, how much of a reader are you? Uh, I would say like a 10. I'm like Ty Lopez. I average uh, approximately one book a day. Yesterday I read two. Um, I read Oh, The Thinks You Can Think. And um, a Sesame Street book about the alphabet. <laughs> so I had to remember for a second. It left a lasting impression. Hmm... And then, kill my ass. And then... I have a hard time believing that that is worth a life, honestly. Does the baby have any books that she likes you reading all the time? Please don't cancel my baby, but she is very uh, heteronormative right now. She is very much like... There are things that boys do and there are things that girls do. And it stretches as far as like there are books that only daddy can read and there are books that only mommy can read. And she'll say like these are girl books, these are boy books. So I'm not allowed to read some of the favorite books that she has that, that mommy reads to her. But from me, it's Oh, The Things You Can Think by Dr. Seuss. She wants me, I read her two books a night. She wants me to read her Oh, The Things You Can Think first every night and then the other one can, uh, it varies from time to time. And then, at bedtime, we have a little, small, truncated, abridged version of Oh, The Things You Can Think. You're right, I do have money equals power. And, uh, and she likes to sleep with that in her crib. Which is very cute. Yeah, but does 14 like to skateboard? He does, he does. Crib at age three. It's a, it's a modular thing. It started out as a, a small crib and then it got extendoed with an extra piece. And then we took one of the walls off. So it's basically just a bed that has like three, three closed sides of it right now. It's got the extendo mag, ejector seat, cuz. That's fine. I'll let it slide. 
My friends without kids be like, Crib at age three? Really? Isn't that a little light? Disingenuous motherfuckers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, 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 oh, <laughs> I can't make it. My, my speed is too low. I gotta, I gotta come at it from the other side. How early is too early to drink? Like 3 p.m.? It's a troubling discussion to get into. Um, I, don't, I, I think there's no set time um, for anybody. It depends on your, your lifestyle. I think it depends on what you're doing that day. Can I say something? And I, I think that we, there's room for discussion here, okay? Let's, let's not just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say question mark, question mark, question mark. I think we need to stop vilifying as inherently degenerate the concept of day drinking. As somebody who goes to bed, ideally around 10, but sometimes like 10, 30, 11, I would rather have two beers with lunch on a Saturday, enjoy a little warmth in the afternoon, digest it, process it, and not have it impact my sleep later that night then have two beers, you know, after dinner, and then go to bed like an hour later, and my REM sleep's gonna be all fucked up as a result of it. It's the basest take you've ever had. They're saying he's a genius. <laughs> That's not the question. That's my, I choose what the question is, librarian. That's my question. On the weekend? Yes. I'm, I'm not drunk on stream, bro. The choices that I make in my personal life, that, I've made some mistakes as a content creator. I should not have played Dark Souls 2 as much as I did, okay? I should have, I should have played it through once when the iron was hot and not tried to recapture the magic. That was... A misstep <laughs> every subsequent time. <laughs> I I'm I hate being a first principles Andy because I don't even work in Silicon Valley. But I'm I derive my behavior on stream from first principles, okay? Sometimes. I whether I want to be or not, impressionable people cannot help but be influenced by what they see. Everybody is in some way changed by the content they choose to consume in their media diet. I would not feel comfortable drinking on stream um, and then just saying, like, drinking is bad, you shouldn't do it. Because I think that it causes a... Um, it's, it, I wouldn't even say it's hypocritical, but I think it's an action that in its own way does harm. I don't think it makes you a bad person, necessarily. I'm just saying... I think people would look at that and say, like, wink, wink, I get you. So I think that I, I drink, I acknowledge that it is bad for you, so I don't want to glorify it on stream. Now, you don't have to be such a point Dexter about it. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's, I was, that's my thoughts succinctly on the subject. Got your brother, I'm cracking a cold one at 11 a.m. I'm not judging. Um, but in my head, I am saying, it's okay, he works third shift. Whether that's true or not. Hey, you shouldn't have that kind of range, Bradley Cooper.
me watching Limitless. People are saying he's washed. People are saying Maestro is not good. I watched half of Maestro. I thought it was... I was having a good time. I don't know. Maybe I'll just shut my mouth. NL isn't answering me because he is high. Brother, I don't partake. I probably should. It would probably help with, like, stress relief. I just can't see myself being the... I don't know. I'm, I'm too... Like, I know that Gen Z is basically living in 2100. In some ways, as someone born in 19, 1988, I'm still living in, like, the 1950s. Like, I just I don't know if I could live with myself if my wife came down the stairs and was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm eating one weed sour patch gummy so that I can have a good night's sleep tonight. I don't think I could... Like, in my 1980s brain, it's like, that's a shortcut to the ick. I don't know. It, that might not be fair. I'm just saying that's how the, the culture has impacted me. You've hurt me? You could just try CBD instead. I prefer drugs that uh, do things to you. Sorry. <laughs> Clearly you don't. Bro, you haven't had six driftwood fat tugs at the Olympic Village Tap and Barrel at lunchtime on a Saturday, okay? And then taking a walk on the seawall. That shit will take you into another dimension. Okay, we want this. We want to re- Oh, we want this in a heartbeat. And then I'm never coming back to this room. Sure, why not? Fat tug this middle finger? Maybe perhaps I will. Perhaps I will, good sir. I did see a tweet that got surfaced to me today. The algorithm knows me very well. It said, we need like even weaker alcohol than we already have. I want to be able to drink all night and not get that drunk. And me at age 22 would have looked at that and said, you're a puss. Me at age 35 was like, hang on, she's actually spitting. And then people were trying to give her solutions. I love how you had it lined up immediately. You know me too well. People were like, what if you drink light beer? And she's like, no, I want something even lighter than that. I want like 2%. And then she was like, or people were like, how about you add water to your drinks to dilute them? And she was like, no, then they'd taste all watery. And like, I understand the principle that a 2% drink by necessity would be more watery, like from the factory. But she's right. Like, it, on a vibe-based base, vibe -based basis, she's right. I don't want to water it down myself. It'll taste watery than they intended. If they make it watery at the factory, then I'll drink it. But I think at least in the, in the Pacific Northwest, they've, like, done the same thing to beer that a, a, apparently they've done to weed, where it's just gotten too strong. Everything is, like, a double fucking triple cream-based... IPA, 10.1% with citra hops and 10 different kinds of hops and this tastes like an orange peel and stuff like that. And I, we, we, gotta, we gotta get some like 3% Andes out there, man. You don't have to buy them. Why not just drink juice? Well, because the um, there's too much sugar in juice. You need the little alcohol to cancel out the, the sugar particles inside of your body. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be unhealthy. I bought a new weed pen. The dude at the store said it was like 6 out of 10 strong. I took a hit and fell asleep at my desk at work. 
I hope you don't work mission control at NASA. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Also, I guess there's a lesson in that is that like you shouldn't trust the strength of it based on the person working at the dispensary, right? I'm an air traffic controller. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm quality control at Boeing. Okay, everybody's got jokes, man. Yes, I will. Oh, man. No, oh, okay, I, I'm a guard at the prison where Jeffrey Epstein was interred. I don't know what interred means. Incarcerated, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. It means buried? Oh, okay, my mistake. I was right, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I don't know enough about weed to comment on it. To, just to be honest with you, I don't think I have the temperament to smoke weed as a 35-year-old man. That's me personally. I'm not. Obviously, there are some people who manage to make it work. But then, like, becoming one of those dudes who takes edibles kind of scares me in the context of um, having a child. I'm not saying they can't intermingle, but, like, a, I, the, the way I understand it, is that you can easily control your dose when you take it uh, via your respiratory system. So you can be like, I'm a little too high. I'm not going to smoke any more weed. I'm not quite as high as I would like to be. I'm going to smoke a little more weed. But like when you take an edible, you're kind of like, it's like a silent auction. You're saying, like, I think I want to be this I, this much brownie high. And then in, like, an hour, I hope you're happy with your decision. Because, like, there's not... Until, like, the morning, you're kind of just set, right? <laughs> no? Well, I mean, like, isn't, I don't know. This is, this is an actual science question. Do you get, do you process it faster via um, your respiratory system? Or is it just that when you eat an edible, you take the whole dose at once, basically? Or, uh, whereas when you smoke it, the same dose, you take it in like, you know, 10 hits where you could get off the ride at any given point. So you could stop it at any moment. You, you're actually more right than you think. That's the power of first principles thinking. Slash marker. Call it Isaac. Is that three? Hang on, I need another 